our video, the adventures of how we spray foam insulated our spoolie. If you haven't checked it out yet, check out part one on our YouTube channel. This is the follow up to that video, just kind of some advice and what we learned from spray foaming, especially for those that want to spray foam and kind of take on this big task. As you can see behind me, I'm currently sitting in our much further along converted schoolie than it shows in the process, but I'm catching up on all of our videos, letting you know how we got to this point. A few things that we learned from insulating the inside of our school bus is it took double the amount of spray foam than we originally estimated it would take to insulate it. Just to give you an idea, we used the Touch and Foam Spray Kit from Home Depot, um, and we have a six window short bus, and we did anywhere from two to four inches of insulation throughout the bus. Um, we did end up blacking out about eight of our windows with insulation, just to give you a better idea of how much we used. But originally we thought we were gonna use two containers and we ended up using four containers of spray foam. Um, so that was quite a hefty price than we had originally thought. Ron wanted to be part of this video, especially since he was the one that spray foamed, but he is busy at work building our kitchen cabinets right now. So I'm gonna to touch on some things from his side as well. So at least in my opinion, if we would have had more time to do the spray foam, we would have gotten quotes from professionals because I think with how much money we spent in the spray foam, um, we could have probably gotten a professional to do it for the same price, if not less. So if you're thinking about going the DIY spray foam route and you have time, I would say at least get professional quotes first also. Personally, I think we over sprayed the bus a lot because when I was reading about things, I saw that you really, under spraying is better than over spraying. Ron thinks the opposite. He thinks that some areas of the bus could still use more over spray, but all I know is that we cut down a lot of insulation. So I think if we would have been more, I guess, precise with spraying in the process, um, we wouldn't have had to cut down as much and you know, we didn't have to go as deep, but that's just my opinion. Ron thinks differently. Um, he did want me to mention too that when he was using the containers of spray foam, when it got near the end, it would kind of start to sputter out and you would see that the foam wasn't working as well. So I don't think he even got all of the foam out of each of the containers because they weren't necessarily working as well once they got toward the end of the life. So he would, that's when he would that's when he knew he would have to stop and trade out containers. Also, we did not have to silicone every nook and cranny because the spray foam didn't expand near the amount that we thought it was going to. So that was just complete overkill. As far as shaving down the spray foam goes, um, when we were doing that, it was a little difficult because we did do all of our electrical behind our spray foam, which we knew was gonna be hard ahead of time. But when we were cutting down the spray foam, we just had to be really careful not to make sure that we were like nicking any electrical wires or cutting where our wires were. Some of our wires did pop out kind of while we were spraying. So we had to carve in an area to push those wires back in. So that was kind of a pain in the butt. So just know that that's something you might have to deal with if you do your electrical beforehand. On the other hand, if you do your electrical after you spray foam, make sure you leave enough room in the walls to tuck your electrical wires. Otherwise, you're gonna have to carve out the spaces for the wires, and that was a complete pain in the butt. Um, the cleanup is messy as F, as you can see in all of the pictures and the videos. Um, it took way longer than we thought, so just be prepared for that. You're gonna be covered in spray foam forever, just cleaning it out of all the nooks and crannies in your own body. Uh, the best thing that worked for us when shaving down the walls was probably a bread knife. Um, just having those little serrated edges worked really well to get in there and get the foam off easily. One of the last things is that on the ribs of our bus that we kind of taped off ahead of time so that if spray foam got on there, we can just peel it off easily. We use masking tape and we should have taken the extra time and gotten into Home Depot and got uh, packing tape. Because we saw videos where packing tape worked so much well, it came off so much smoother. Whatever spray foam got on that, you just grab the end and peel it off and it was nice and smooth. So if we would have go back and do it again, I would have ran into Home Depot and got the packing tape instead. Um, other than that, I think that's all the info we have for you. Um, it was quite an in-depth process. We learned a lot doing spray foam insulation. If anybody has any other questions or you're thinking about doing it yourself, please 
don't hesitate um, to ask us any questions you have. Leave a comment. Get a hold of us because um, we know it can be a big task to take on yourself. Other than that, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on our next episode.